now come to the third episode of season two, The Siege. This episode I didn't get as much enjoyment out of than I have done the other episodes. Not because there wasn't anything happening, but unlike the previous episodes, there wasn't anything that happened really that progressed the storyline much in this episode. So what happens? Mando heads back to the main town from the last season because his ship needs more repairs that the Mon Calas weren't able to do for him. While doing this, he comes across Reef Karga and Kara Doom, who asks Mando for help in dealing with an Imperial refinery which has been causing the planet a little bit of trouble. While doing this, they get some more information on what Gideon wanted with the child, and once they destroy the base, Mando heads off and we find out that a track has been put on the Razor Crest by an Imperial spy working for Moff Gideon. So this episode in itself is a lot of fun to watch, and the accident scenes are very fun to watch as, as well. However, aside from the small scene in the middle and the last 5 minutes, there wasn't much that really added to the story. We see that the old town where Mando used to collect his bounties from has been fully restored and is now a bustling town where people are happily growing up and living their lives. Griff Karga see, um, seems to be the town leader from what I can gather, and Carver Doon has become the marshal of the town, which is nice to see these characters from the last season and what they've been getting up to since we last saw them. About halfway through this episode, we see what looks like Bacta tanks, or the tanks that the Kaminoans used to use the, to create the clones from the Clone Wars. We then hear a scientist from the last season talking about the M count of the child, and in order to complete his work, we need more. They need more blood. Now, I think M count means midichlorian count. And along with the Bacta tanks, I think the Empire are trying to clone Force users, or at least grow their own Force users. And by judging by what we saw with Moff Gideon, I think he's planning something big, and it may involve a Soaker a bit later. On the topic of the fight in the Imperial Refinery, I got some really, really good Death Star and New Hope vibes, mainly from the blaster sounds of the Stormtroopers, but also the sounds from Mando and the others as well. I even think that one of the blasters sounds the same as the DL-44, which is the same as the one that Han Solo uses, I'm um, in A New Hope, which, and in all the other movies as well, but it just adds to the vibes as well. We also see the New Republic talking to Cara Dune at the end of this episode, we find out that she is a native to Alderaan, which is nice to see a little bit of background form with her character, and why she is so passionate about fighting, or why she was so passionate about fighting with the Rebellion, but I would like to know more detail on why she left. I'd also like to know a bit more about Cargo as well, as I don't feel we know much about him, or if anything at all. However, at the end of the episode, we saw Mando depart from the planet without, Car without Grief Cargo and Cara Dune. Now, I thought the idea of him going back to see them was so he could recruit them and help him find Ahsoka, which would have made this episode a lot better for me because it would have given him purpose of being there in the first place, rather than just going there to get his ship repaired and then just kind of, like, disappearing. You know, that sort of disappointed me a little bit. So overall, I didn't really like this episode. I enjoyed small parts of this episode, such as the references from the action scene in the last five minutes were really good as well. But other than that, this episode just really wasn't very enjoyable.